what's going on guys in today's video we're going to be breaking down my top three favorite joint and swim baits in this video i'm going to be taking three of my favorites and going over a couple of their strengths and weaknesses to hopefully help you figure out which ones you need to be throwing out there on the water all right guys let's go ahead and jump into my number one pick if i could only have one joint and swim bait on the deck day in and day out it would hands down be this 125 slow sinking white Seville. This is a bait I've thrown for probably eight to 10 years with. I have a ton of time on the water and experience with this bait. And there's something special about the Seville that just consistently puts them in the boat for me. So let's talk a little bit about the Seville and then we're gonna jump into a couple of the details and some things I like to do with this bait. The Seville itself is a hard plastic Jordan swim bait it has three segmented body pieces and it really excels at a higher to medium speed retrieve. And what I mean by that is this isn't a bait I'm typically going to go out there and do a slower kind of creeping retrieve with just due to the fact this bait has a tendency to kind of stick on itself and these joints won't really flow naturally at a slower speed. But at a medium to a burn or almost a wake um, retrieve this bait can be highly effective. Now, moving into the colors, I typically keep it pretty simple on the Seville. I have played with some of the chrome ones and even some fancy airbrush patterns, but the most consistent color for me is just this plain pearl white. And I'll throw this when it's cloudy, when it's sunny, if it's windy, I'm pretty much only throwing this pearl white for a couple of reasons. I really like this bold white color because I feel as if these fish can see it from a longer distance and it has such a bold presence in the water that these fish are more times than not going to come up and look at it. So the drawing power of just a white Seville is something to be noted and something that I pretty much only exclusively throw when I am throwing this Seville. Just so I know the fish are seeing it, I can see them, I can see the fish behind it. And it's more of an odds deal for me. So if I can get this bait in the front of as many fish as I can in a day, and I know that they're seeing it every time, that's what I'm looking for. So lastly, where do I throw the Seville? Primarily, I'm gonna be throwing it over brush piles on long running points and humps and things of that nature. This bait is extremely effective in calling fish out of structure when they are set up a little bit higher in the water column. So if I look at my forward facing sonar and I see some of these fish a little bit higher over a brush pile or on a pot of bait or just out there roaming on a point, this is a bait I'm going to 100% pick up and throw over there just because it will draw these fish away from the bait they're on or the brush pile they're sitting in the tops of and they will come up and absolutely crush this thing. That's the Seville. If I could only have one, it would hands down be this one. It's super consistent day in and day out, and there's just something about this base action that gets bit. And lastly, before we leave the Seville, there's something about this bait and active schooling fish that just seems to trigger them for whatever reason. And if you happen to see fish schooling out on the lake, a lot of people will reach for a fluke or a topwater style bait, which work exceptionally well, but for me, I'm more likely going to pick up the Seville just due to the fact that this is a good profile for these fish to pull off the herring and pull off other bait fish and track and eat. And for whatever reason, this bait and active schooling fish gets bit more consistent for me than anything else. And the hookup ratio is super high on this because you have two treble hooks and it has a full bait fish profile. So like I said, if you can only have one, definitely a Seville. I personally like this pearl white pattern. If I could only pick one, that would be it. All right, guys, moving into my number two pick. This is a bait. It's a little bit more situational for me, but it's a super cool bait. I want to tell you all about it. This is actually the Sweet Bait Junior. So the Junior model comes in about four, four and a half inches. It's a little bit smaller than the standard model, which is five to six, six and a half inches. And that bait is an incredible bait for pulling some of the biggest fish out of a brush pile or a seawall or a bridge wherever you may be throwing that sweet bait it can pull some giant fish but for a tournament situation and overall consistency i have fallen in love with the junior model it's a little bit smaller and i just seem to get these fish to commit to it a little bit more consistently 
This one right here happens to be a natural herring color. This one is killer on those sunny slick days where you need something ultra realistic and this bait definitely fills that gap for me. On the sweet bait, it has an incredible paint job and almost a glossy finish too. With that being said, these are a little bit more expensive. They vary from anywhere from about $200 to $235. So this definitely isn't a swim bait for everyone. But if you are looking for something ultra realistic and if you feel like these fish are getting pressured or you want to show them something a little bit different, the sweet bait can be a great option. Now, as far as my retrieve with the sweet bait, I will do a much slower speed retrieve than the Sibyl. I will creep this bait just because of these joints have a lot more of a free swinging action than the Sibyl. So you are able to kind of mix up your speeds a lot more with this bait. And personally, the slower you reel this bait can be the better at times. I've seen that in May a lot in that early season when these fish aren't super active yet, but they are still feeding heavily on herring. This bait can be deadly. So if I had to pick two, it would definitely be that Sibyl and closely behind the sweet bait. Not one I'm going to throw every day, but when I feel like these fish are getting pressured a little bit, I want to show them something a little bit different and a completely different action than that Sibyl. This one can be a great one to incorporate. A little bit more expensive, but if you are serious about joining swim baits and looking for one that is a little bit more, I guess you could say in a niche in itself, this one's a great one. Like I said, that natural herring is a killer color. I also have this in a pearl white similar to the Sibyl. This one happens to not have a fluke tail because I had one rip it off a couple of days ago. But when that does happen, all you have to do is slide this little pin out, grab a tiny fluke by zoom, bite off about a quarter or an eighth of an inch and slide that on there and put the pin back through and you'll be ready to roll. So that's a really cool feature about this bait. Super easy to replace and gives that fish a little bit something extra to hone into when they get close. The so sweet bait is definitely a winner in my book and something I will integrate not every day, but when I feel like the conditions present itself will be when I grab. All right, guys, my third pick and a bait that I'm super excited to throw in these next upcoming months will have to be the Spro 125 Sashimi Swimmer. This is a bait I've only had about five to six days on the water with, but I've been super impressed with this bait and I've seen a lot of things in these other two baits that I think has almost been refined and redone and borderline perfected. I'm able to reel this bait extremely slow at a medium or speed and I can burn this bait faster than any of the other ones here and have it not blow out. And what I mean by blowing out is you're reeling the bait so fast that it catches on itself or kicks off to the side, rises to the surface, something of that nature that's super unnatural in the water and you're not looking for that. But this bait can be reeled as fast as you possibly want to reel it in my opinion. I've tried to blow it out and it's, it is incredibly hard to get this bait to foul up or do anything unnatural. I think that's because of a couple reasons. On the Sibyl and the sweet bait, the hinges are almost at a horizontal level. On the Spro, they are angled down, which I believe allows this bait to be reeled at a higher speed. And nine times out of 10, when I am fishing these jointed swim baits, I am doing a very high speed retrieve with the exception of the sweet bait. So this Spro actually has an extra segmented body piece. So this one has four compared to the Sibyl and the sweet bait right here that only has three. But this bait is super versatile. I've caught some really big fish on it recently and I'm excited to implement this in my fishing in this fall transition period we're coming up on. I think this one is definitely a winner and really excited to throw this bait. Super cool paint jobs on these. I'm not sure the exact name of this one. This one does have that just plain pearl white belly that I do like on the Sibyl. That's why I grabbed this one. So this is my third pick only because I don't have a ton of experience with it, but I believe it might, it might crawl to that number one spot over the next year just because 
of some of the features they have changed with this bait that I've really wanted to see in the Seville and the Sweet Bait. So this one only comes in about $18, so it's pretty inexpensive. And once it's widely available, I would definitely get your hands on one and play with this, reel it fast as you want, and give these fish a little bit different look that they're not been used to compared to these other two. So that Spro is definitely a winner. Caught some on it. Super excited to fish it this fall. And even right now, I've caught some pretty good ones over some brush piles and schooling fish, things of that nature. All right, guys, before we wrap things up, I want to take a couple quick moments and go over some of the terminal upgrades I do on each of these baits that I really think makes a difference between landing fish and having some really big fish come off and just some things that you need to change out on these baits to be successful on the water. So let's go ahead and jump back into my number one pick, which was the Sibyl. I'm gonna tell you all a couple of things I do to this bait to help me land a couple more fish and just help this bait really perform how it should. So straight out of the package, if you pick up one of these Sibyls, I personally would take off all of these split rings and hooks on these and replace them with owner hyperwire number five split rings all the way to the front to the last hook. This just gives you the security that you know you have the best split rings on there so nothing of that you won't have one bend one out or lose a fish because a split ring came off. Anything of that nature that will completely eliminate that. As far as the hooks go, I really like to throw a number four G finesse up front. I believe this one has it right there. As you can see, that number four G finesse is a fairly light wire hook. So you don't want a very stiff rod when throwing a Seville in the first place to keep these fish pinned up. But that, uh, that G finesse is super sticky and it's really crucial when these fish are coming up and just swiping and kind of swatting at the bait that you want the stickiest hook you can to just if they do happen to get anywhere near it, that they will get stuck in some form. So that G finesse has been the most consistent for me for catching and landing fish, having that one up front. And the, the hook on the back is also something that I've played around with a lot and I've landed on the size four Gamagatsu feathered treble. And it's no secret that a feathered treble on these jointed swim baits is something that can be the difference maker in getting a fish to commit or peel off the bait or something of that nature. And I think that feather gives them a little bit something extra to track and really hone into when they get close to that bait. So on all of these, I will put that feather treble on the back, except for the sweet bait. That sweet bait comes with that soft plastic fluke style tail. And that kind of does the same thing I'm looking for. Once that fish gets up on the bait, has something to kind of hone in on and track and give them a point to eat the bait. So on the Spro, I will also run that number four Gamakatsu feather treble on the back of that as well, similar to the Sibyl. And the sweet bait, I like to run the Owner ST36s, I believe on there. It's a little bit um, more of a light wire hook than that Gamakatsu. And I think it allows this bait to swim a little bit more natural in that water. And like I was saying, I do reel these sweet baits at a lot lower or slower speed than these other two, which I do more of a burning speed with. So having a little bit lighter hook seems to let that bait be a little bit more natural in the water. So to wrap things up, these are baits that I will throw early season, late April. I will throw these all of May, moving into June, and that full on brush season that we get into in the summer. But my favorite time of the year to throw these would have to be that fall, late September, whole month of October, and even into November. These baits are extremely effective on schooling fish and being able to draw fish out of brush piles. And I love throwing these fish to roaming pods of them I see on live scope. This bait, or these baits are extremely effective on herring lakes like Lanier and Hartwell. I've played with them on Murray and a couple other lakes, and it seems like they are able to imitate a herring profile better than a lot of other baits. And hope a couple of these quick tips helped y'all, and hope to hear back from y'all and see how you implemented these into your fishing. So if you like this kind of video where I break down a group of baits and kind of go over some of the things I do to them, let me know in the comments below. But other than that, 
go ahead and drop a subscribe and a like and it'd be greatly appreciated. So we'll see y'all in the next video.